G'day everyone. I've just been out doing a bit of digging, getting my first ever attempt at uh, a field grown bonsai, and I'll just flip around and show you what we've got. Now, I can't actually remember what the name of this plant was, but it's a very vigorous grower, and it's got nice fine leaves, so it'll be easy to make it look like a bonsai. If I... This one here is probably the one that I like the most, because it's got some nice bends, so I'm going to try and split that into two separate trees. And I've got to look at these a little bit and work out what I'm going to do with them. All right, so we're ready to do some gentle pruning. Got my uh, my fine detail pruner out, and what we're going to do is cut straight through that line there. So we'll end up with two distinct plants. So so I'll end up with that one branch at the front and the larger one at the back there, and probably the one. After a little bit of gentle pruning, we now have one section, which you know, has got a bit of nice movement in it. So I'll try and plant that, see what comes out of it. And I might still need to trim some more of this, but we've now got a, another large section. A fair bit of chopping later, we have something that we'll be able to fit into this basket. I uh, need to do a little bit of pruning of the roots on the other side, but that I believe will still grow nicely and have this nice shape piece on it. So now just to do the other two, they shouldn't be as hard. Okay, so we've moved inside. I'm here with uh, Ferguson Smugglers, the budgie. I've got myself some soil, which I just need to mix the different parts together. And I have myself four lots of branches and roots and a handful of pots. So we'll jump in and start sorting out these roots, get it potted up, and hopefully we get some growing. So it occurred to me that most of you do not know who I am. And sorry that I haven't introduced myself. Um, so my name's Tim. I I've been doing YouTube for quite some time and um, but just not on this channel so I normally run a channel called Nortronics which is about electronics and 3d printing and manufacturing and that sort of thing but I got into bonsai it's quite some time ago but it's only been recently I've gotten back into it so I thought I'd start a new channel for a novice bonsai channel because I very much am a novice um, so for this one I need to still take some of the, the bottom roots off of it to fit it in this size basket. I could go for a bigger basket, but I really want to start it small. I don't know if that's the best idea, but that's what I'm going to do. There's a broken off one. And there's another broken one there. Um, so basically, I'll cut down those bottom branches, bottom roots, get it to squeeze in, and then we'll come back into the video. Gotcha. So one of the things I like about bonsai is you don't need any special tools. I literally have some reasonable quality secateurs. I picked up this scoop today from Ikea for $2 just to help me with moving my soils. So this is a nub cutter or a, a branch cutter. That's the only thing I've bought of a genuine and it's because the shape of it allows it to cut in and leave a nice um, curved cut so that heals over better. But the rest of it actually comes from my electronic stuff. Side cutters, they're approximately $7 each. Long nose pliers for twisting my wires. And my root rake is actually an old fork. In this case, it's a, a baby's fork or child's fork, which I've just bent. Uh, so I've got two different ways I can use it. So I've basically, in total, on tools I've had to buy, I think that cost me $25. That's all I've bought on proper tools. The rest was just bits I had lying around. So you can actually get into this hobby very cheap. Um, the wire and stuff, I went out and bought bulk of the wire, which if you're in Australia and you're interested in buying some off of me, I'll list some details on that. But basically... I haven't really spent 
a great deal on getting myself set up to go. I visited a plant nursery and I'll, I've got another video up on that, which currently is on a different channel, but I'll share it here. Sorry, it's not really a plant nursery, another bonsai guy. And he had way too much stock and he wanted to get rid of some of his um, larger stuff that he wasn't likely to do anything with. Wasn't yet in bonsai stage, but so I went and purchased a whole heap off of him for a very reasonable price, which has set me up that I have quite a lot to, to start working with. So I'm basically just chopping back some of the bigger roots that won't easily bend. I really do think I'm going to have to get the saw out for this one, which might make this a tomorrow job. Um, I probably need to actually just chop some of that off because um, all of these roots here are in the way. I'll persist with it for the moment, see what I can get rid of by hand. I could potentially just chop through this piece here. Yeah, um, I might just go out and get a small saw. So again, another very low cost tool. This was a little saw I bought from, I think it was Bunning some time ago. It was cheap as, it's not strong or anything, but it certainly can cut wood. Okay. However, it is biting in rather badly and bending, which makes it a bit hard. That's probably enough for me to now get the snippers in too. So a little bit of information about the budgie there. So I got given him from someone else who just wanted to move him on to a new family. Um, they called him Ferguson, but I'm calling him Smugglers. And anyone who lives in Australia will have heard the term budgie smugglers, which is a term for uh, our bathers, which they're so small you could fit your budgies in there. So his name's gonna be Smugglers, but I might interchange that with Ferguson depending on my mood. All right, so we're starting to get to a point that will fit in. It's got quite a groove in here, which is where it was growing across another branch that got ripped out. Um, not sure, I mean, that is a natural part of the way this tree's grown, but it's a bit of a funny one there. I might, as I grow it, don't know what I'll do with it, leave it as a, a feature or try and hide it. Not really sure, but we'll cross that later on. So my next trick is I need to put some wire on this to hold it into the container. Um, and then I'll backfill it with dirt, arrange the roots a little bit. So they're pointing roughly where I'd like them. And uh, then we'll be done with this one and ready for the next. Let's get some wire onto this. So I use predominantly aluminium, partly because it's lower cost and it's easier to work with. Um, the real diehards will say you've got to use copper. Um, I believe there are some benefits, but until you're really serious about what you're doing, I don't think there's any real need to go to the expense um, I think one of the major differences is for the gauge, the same thickness, copper is a lot more rigid, so you can get a much better bend in a branch um, without having to have as much or as thick a wire. Now, for the purpose of just trying to wire something in here, that really doesn't matter. So I've just basically got to get this into a position where it will hold. Um, and then I'll backfill the pot. So I think I'll go over there. Um, and just go through the other side. It's not really a technique that you would use in a proper pot. But again, this is just a temporary pot until the plant starts to grow healthily again after this treatment. So 
So I'll just poke that out the other side. Try to. Just make that hole a little bigger. Something that really surprised me when I started off watching other people's videos is just how rough they can be with their bonsais. It's um, something that you think is a very delicate uh, process, but there are aspects of it that you can be extremely rough and uh, literally grind out sections of trees, chop most of the root system off. Um, but there is some knowledge needed before you do that so that you don't stress the tree too much and actually kill the tree as a result of what you're doing. I can't say as yet I have that knowledge. Um, so I'm a little bit reluctant to do some of the things that I've seen others do, but hopefully given time, I'll do some experimenting and I will be able to be a lot more aggressive with my bonsaiing. But the bulk of bonsaiing is about patience. It's not about trying to fast track things. All right, so we're nearly done here. A little bit of a hole there. So I don't know if I mentioned it before, but these baskets only cost me $5 each. So a very low cost entry point. Um, probably not overly good to be in the sun for years, but they don't need to be. So they'll be fine for what I'm doing. Okay, so my tree is physically held down. It won't blow over in a breeze. Um, let's pull that a bit tighter. Yeah, it is. Getting a little bit of chat back over there. So I'm just pushing my roots around a little. Just so that as they do start to develop, they're sort of in the direction that I would like them. This one's quite long, but I don't want to chop it off because it's got a lot of fine roots which will draw up the water. Okay. Put that one down to the bottom. All right, so now I will just throw in some of my soil mix. Something about the soil mix, which uh, I was quite surprised at when I started. I'll just throw a bit in my hand here. So I'm not sure how well you can see that, but it is predominantly larger hard clumps. There's not a lot of actual soft organic material. These little white bits are perlite. I'd like them to be a bit bigger, but that's basically pumice. Those bits are baked clay. A lot of purists will use something called Akadama, which is a baked clay, which is smaller than this, but I found it very hard to get here in Australia. So I've basically just mixed up my own mix. When this gets transferred to a proper pot, I will more than likely use something that has a much more refined uh, version of the Akadama, the clay. I've been trying a few techniques to break this down, but so far nothing overly successful, but it, it's working for me at the moment. So the reason that we go for such little organic material is we want the roots to drain very well. Now in Australia, it's well, here in South Australia where I am, it can be very, very hot. So we get up into the mid forties, typically once or twice a year, centigrade that is. Um, and during winter, it's reasonably wet, but you want your soil to drain quite well. And um, the large aggregate in here does that. 
but because of how hot and dry it is, I do have enough of the moisture absorbing nutrients, the organic matter. So where a lot of the overseas YouTubers will use a much, much higher um, aggregate ratio in theirs and not much organic, I think in Australia that's a little bit problematic that uh, unless you're home to water three or four times a day, you'll end up with your trees drying out and dying. So, All right, so I'll fill this in. Okay, so next what we need to do is basically try and move all of that soil down in between the roots so we don't have air pockets. And I'm just trying to see on my desk here, I normally have a chopstick. So this is just a takeaway food chopstick. And I've actually got a little brush on the end that I use for other purposes, but just poke it down. This will fill in the gaps and basically as we do that, we'll have to come back and put a little bit more in on top. But you want to get rid of as much of the air gaps down in between those roots because they will die off if they don't have that. And particularly given this has just been ripped out the ground and has a lot less root structure, we don't want that to happen. So it'll take me a little while to do this and then I'll add a bit more soil on top. You can also use something a bit coarser. Um, but because I'm trying to get down deep, I'll stick with the thin one because it, it, it does like literally, I just found that air pocket there and I've got to push that in whereas the bigger one wouldn't have gone in and filled that. So I've used up a huge amount just in that little spot there. So I'll have to fill this back up in a moment. So naturally the smaller stuff is probably ending up at the bottom now it's not really ideal because you do want it to drain however this pot is going to drain very well with all the side holes um, so I'm not overly worried about that So this process does take a fair while and it sort of seems a little bit pointless until after you've done it and you see how much these holes, let's see if I can show you that hole there. Uh, you probably can't really see it, but there's quite a hole under here that has got no soil in it. So I need to focus a bit more on that spot down in there. And then I'll also have to do the other side. So I'll just throw a bit more of the soil into there and keep on poking it down. So I'm going to stop the video at this point because not a lot to see here and then I'll come back on once we're finished. Okay so I've finished with uh, my packing down. It's I know you can't tell this on a video but I'm feeling that it is quite firm underneath. As well as going straight down you also want to go in on angles and that way you'll get in under the root ball. Okay so I've done that. Now just looking at these two branches here. So you don't want two parallel branches like I've got here. Now I could just leave this and see what it does in time, but I'm inclined to lose one of the branches now. And I think for the moment, I'm just gonna leave both of them on there and I'll work out what I'll do with it later on once we uh, have it more established, it's growing back some more leaves. So basically at this stage, it's just let the plant recover. 
just leave it for a period of time and it will slowly start to grow shoots back. It's freezing cold here in Adelaide. Our daytime temperatures are 13, 14 degrees and nighttime um, five degrees and frosty. So it's not really growing season for it, but my friends who were removing this from their garden wanted it gone now, so I didn't really have a choice. So I'll put this one out and we'll see what happens. And I'm pretty sure it's going to live. It's a matter of how fast it starts to recover. All right, move on to the next. So it's the next day. We have them all planted out. I'm still contemplating swapping the one over on this side to a bigger pot because that really doesn't suit. But let's just have a little bit of a look. So we've got uh, this one here has some very long lengths, but I'm thinking of doing something called air layering to take off. Uh, where's my finger? To take off this branch here and create a new plant from that one. Because when we look at it from above, we've got some quite nice shape, nice movement to it. And possibly the same with this branch here. So we end up with just a main trunk, which I'll plant in on a different angle. This one I think is gonna be extremely nice. So we've got that big bend up the main branch. Um, probably need to remove possibly this branch here but we'll just let it grow for a while. And this one has the double branch, which ultimately we will need to get rid of one of. And then that one there, which is really just an off cut. So what I'm gonna do is give them a water with some sea sol, just to let the roots um, have a bit of a chance to get going. And then I'll put them in my greenhouse for a few weeks, since it is the mid winter period for us.